Mm. All right, Lisa, so when was the last time you felt anxious? Are you serious? I think a better question is, when was the last time I didn't feel <laughs> anxious? What about you? Heck, I feel anxious right now. <laughs> you do? Well, you know, the thing is, problems at work, tests, important decisions, they can all cause us to feel anxious. And if you only experience anxiety occasionally, well, experts say that's just a normal part of life. But for those 40 million adults and one in eight children who experience it, it's a worry that lasts sometimes all day, every day, with only about a third seeking treatment. Now, according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, or ADAA, anxiety disorders include generalized anxiety disorder, which affects nearly 7 million people, with women twice as likely to be affected than men. Then there are those 6 million who suffer panic attacks each year. These attacks, many times, can just come out of the blue and are often inherited. The ADAA also lists more than 15 million people with social anxiety, which can begin as early as 13. 19 million with specific phobias, which can start at seven. Now, OCD and PTSD, they are closely related to these disorders. And if anxiety is left untreated, it can lead to depression. The ADAA describes depression as a common but serious illness that interferes with daily life and causes pain for both you and those who care for you. Depression can be major, where symptoms interfere with your ability to work, sleep, eat, and enjoy life. It can also come in a persistent form, which lasts for about two years. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, depression is most likely caused by a combination of genetic, biological, environmental, and psychological factors. Now, along with factors that cause mental anguish, health experts are now looking at its effects when it comes to heart disease in teens. In a statement published in the American Heart Association, one study actually found that the history of heart depression was the number one risk factor for heart disease deaths in women under 30. And if the heart weren't enough, experts are also looking at a child's eating habits and its connection to anxiety and depression. A new study in the Journal of Pediatrics suggests how a child eats could be a signal of emotional issues. Of the 20% of children ages two to six considered picky or selective eaters, 3% were severely selective and more likely to suffer from anxiety or depression. But pediatricians add children with anxiety also experience those feelings in other settings too, not just when it comes to food. Well, as you can imagine, there are other signals when it comes to anxiety and depression. Signs like fear, worry, persistent sadness or empty feelings, irritability or just fatigue, that's just to name a few. But there is also a contributing factor that many of us do every day. Some of us do it day in and day out, and we don't even realize its impact. What does a couch, a chair, and a car ride all have in common? Sitting. And researchers have linked this sedentary behavior to serious anxiety. If you're sitting more than six hours a day, you're at risk for life-changing health problems like obesity, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and osteoporosis. A day of sitting is more dangerous than smoking or parachuting, and it kills more people than HIV. Small changes can make a difference. Don't grab your comfy clothes for lounging when you get home. Instead, slip into something you can sweat in, do lunges, push-ups, or simple cleaning tasks, like dusting while catching up on your favorite shows. Swap your desk chair for an exercise ball. You'll gain better balance, build stronger core muscles, and the small movements put you in a better mood, reducing your anxious thoughts. Get up every hour, take the stairs, or go to your coworker's office rather than sending an email to break up the hours of sitting. In five of the studies done, anxiety was directly linked to sitting, which really makes me want to stand up. Now. Yeah, right? Now get this, Lisa. 36% of high school students who watched more than two hours of television had more anxiety than the ones who watched less. All right, so now you know to enjoy television in moderation. After you watch us. Of course. <laughs> well, there's a new, more visual movement people with anxiety and depression are turning to. Now, we've all heard of self-expression, even self-expression in the form of a tattoo. But what about using a tattoo to help you overcome your worst thoughts? And better yet, one that reminds you of the goodness in what's yet to come. I've struggled with it since I was 16 years old. It's been quite a journey, getting comfortable with something most people would hide. I absolutely work every day of my life to do that. She went beyond the shame, past the silence. It was her depression that defined a path. Your tattoo artist is your therapist. It's what it is, you're sitting hours with someone who is stabbing you repeatedly over and over again, 
and you literally, as soon as that initial puncture happens, uh, everything changes. So it's no coincidence one particular image is resonating with her in a way no other permanent mark has before. Like people come to me all the time and they're like, I'm not happy with my body, can you make me feel pretty? The semicolon is a common punctuation mark that represents a continuation. Instead of using the period to end a sentence, this means the story isn't over. And those with mental illness are marking themselves with this metaphor. There's more important things than escaping or leaving you know, people behind that care about you. You know, there's there's so many more things to life than just ending it. Brianna's semicolon is covering her self-harming scar from a cigarette burn. There was a lot that surrounded my appearance. It gets to the point where you, you feel worthless or you feel like you don't want to be, you know, part of the world anymore. Mental health workers are encouraged. This movement is removing the isolation around this illness. Some of the most comforting words in the English language are me too. Semicolon itself is very, very subtle. And so I think when people see it, acknowledge it, it's not really bold or out there, but it's still making a statement. And the symbol of solidarity has moved this tattoo shop to donate a portion of the proceeds from the semicolon tattoos to the Canadian Mental Health Association. A lot of our staff here, they have mental issues. We all do. Um, to be in this industry, you, you sort of have to have a little bit of a different style of thinking and patterns. So we decided to uh, want to do something better for the community. And the ink becomes a constant reminder of strength and survival. You know, Sean, I think it's a really good idea. I like the idea of uh, making that conversation about depression an open one, even yeah. if it's nonverbal mm -hmm. with the... Uh, the tattoo. Yeah, well, if a tattoo doesn't really fit your personality, there are other steps you can take. Steps like medication or psychotherapy, even deep brain stimulation is being used with this type of therapy. Doctors implant electrodes into the brain that are controlled remotely. Deep brain stimulation is also being used for Parkinson's, epilepsy, cluster headaches, and OCD. Sounds kind of promising. It really does. And if you're like the more than 80% of working Americans that feel stress on the job, we even have a method for you. A mood altering method that comes in a form of a simple device you wear. For the past year, 75% of American adults have reported increasing levels of stress, and many don't know how to manage it. But now, tech companies have developed new ways to change your mood by using wearable technologies. Doppel is a wristwatch that uses rhythm to lower your heart rate and keep you calm. The user can control the rhythm through a smartphone app. Another new device is Muse, a headband that turns your brain waves into soothing wind sounds. It connects to your phone through Bluetooth to give you a beautiful sunset as you meditate. For a more direct stimulation, Think is a wearable system that you attach to your head. It sends low-level electrical pulses to your brain that tells your nerves to chill out wearable technology to help you stay cool. Now the Muse headband and Think systems cost about $300 each and they include the app. The Doppel watch is just a prototype but the company has launched a Kickstarter to get it into retail stores by April 2016. I might have to check that out. And if you have a kid in college you probably needed the headband to calm you down after you saw the price of textbooks. Still ahead on Del Marva Live, find out how much textbooks costs have gone up over the decades. Who's setting these prices? and how you can get the same books for a fraction of the cost. Well, one Maryland college has a solution. Do it with textbooks all together. Find out why they say it's not only a cost-saving solution, but a better way to teach students. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.